Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. We've got something pretty interesting to talk about today. Today we're going to be talking about light primer strikes. Um, I'll let Zach kind of explain what happened. It was actually with this particular gun. This is a GSG Firefly 22LR. Um, light primer strikes are going to be pretty common with 22s, but I'll let Zach kind of go into details a little bit and we'll talk about it a little bit. That sounds good. All right, so I went down to my local gun shop. I was checking out the different options they had had. As you all know, Kyle has done a review on the GSG Firefly, and it is a, overall, it's a good gun for what price they have it at. Oh, yeah, absolutely. How much did you pay for that one? Uh, I think it's 215 and then the background check. And yeah, things. they're ridiculously cheap, and they're actually really good pistols. Yes. I was very happy with it. Of course, we got it in the you know mint color just because it looks interesting on video. It does good on shorts and things like that. But... So, uh, I bought a brand new gun. I don't think nothing about it. I've always bought different type, like either bigger caliber guns or guns. I've never bought a 22 brand new. I've yeah, bought them yeah. used and I bought, you know, like nines and things like that, larger caliber. This was my first time buying this. And I took it over to Kyle's house and I was like, all right, well, I'm going to go, you know, shoot my brand new gun. You know, let's go have some fun. I've set up some paper targets and things like that. I put a couple of bullets in the magazine, loaded up, fired maybe three shots, and on the third one, I pulled the trigger, hammer dropped, nothing happened. I asked, I looked around, I was like, hmm, that's strange. It's a brand new gun. Why is it having a light primer strike? But uh, whatever. So, you know, got ejected that one out of the magazine, went on to the next one, kept going. Before I even finished the magazine, Light primer shock again. I was like, okay, did I buy a defective gun? <laughs> like, I'm, I know Kyle did a review on one, but maybe I maybe I got a bad one. Maybe I got a manufacturer defect. Yeah. So basically, with this particular instance, what I believe happened was only 22s. Um, I'll have Zach give you <clears throat> a close up um, of where the, the what the the firing pin is on this. It strikes the primer. Basically, when they're new, they're really stiff, or maybe they got too much oil. So on this hammers hitting that firing pin it's so stiff that it's barely tapping the bullet itself um, now in some cases this isn't the case but a lot of times if you've got a dirty gun or maybe a brand new gun you're gonna run into those light primer strikes now once again this being my first experience with this i went ahead and i was like all right well i'll talk to kyle a little bit but i'm gonna look up some videos about this particular gun from other people about how they cleaned it what they issues they ran into and one thing I did find is that a few people mentioned that this particular style of gun actually likes higher velocity ammo. Yeah. Like, basically anything that fires too slow may also cause it some issues as well. And for some reason, CCI Mini Mag was on the list of things that they, <laughs> which I had well, just bought 5,000 rounds of. So with, with uh, the reason with 22s, a lot of semi-auto 22s do prefer high velocity ammo, and that's because they need that extra uh, recoil to, to cock it back. So if you shoot low velocity, it's not gonna cock back because it doesn't have enough recoil to do a full cycle. It'll half cock or something like that. And did we run into any of that when we were shooting yours? Do you remember if it ever just half cocked and didn't recycle? I think it only did it once or twice. So that, yeah, it's probably to do with the ammunition we were shooting in it. And that, this is actually the ammo he was shooting in it right here. Yeah. This mini mag. Which, of course, like I said, I just bought 5,000 rounds. So it was disappointing to find out that <laughs> I'm shooting a brand new gun with, you know, all this brand new ammo I have. And it's just causing it issues. So what I did was, uh, if you have seen it, we just did a gun cleaning kit review. I actually took that gun cleaning kit apart. I took this gun apart. I cleaned everything just to make sure there was no factory defects, anything I was missing. And I applied some gun oil. I have some of the gun oil that I used back there. That was actually, they had it at Walmart. Oh, it was yeah. the cheap gun oil that they had. But uh, this is actually a decent gun oil too. What is the name of it? That's the Hops. Hops. Hops Elite. Sorry. I've actually got some of that stuff. It's, it's decent. It's not, it's good for cleaning, put it that way. And um, speaking of which, it actually wouldn't be a bad idea for a video if we uh, show people how to apply gun oil to a new gun. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Because, like, that was the first thing I did when I took it apart. I was like, okay, well, you know, I've applied gun oil to guns before, but this is a brand new gun to me. It's like, what am it says apply it to all moving parts. If you don't really know how your gun works, you don't really know what the moving parts are necessarily. But I kind of knew, so I just went ahead and applied it to all the areas I assumed was going to be causing me the issues. Um, so, how you know you're, you're getting a light primer strike, um, what you do is, uh, 
Well, if it's it's a lot easier to do if you do have a double action pistol and not a single action. So for instance, uh, this is the this is the Glock uh, 19X that I carry. This is what you call a single action because basically you cock it and shoot it, but it has to cycle in order to cock itself again. With Zach's gun here, if it uh, <clears throat> if you go to shoot it and this goes down, being a double action, you can actually pull the trigger again and it'll it'll cycle again um, or it'll attempt to shoot again. So with these kind of pistols, it's a lot easier to diagnose, but what you can do is, for instance, if he shoots and it doesn't go off, he can actually pull that trigger again and that did work a few times. That's how we determined it was like primer strike and not actually bad ammunition because 22 ammo, especially older 22 ammo, um, you get a lot of that where it doesn't fire. It's not a like primer strike. The bullets are just no good. Yeah. Yeah. And that was the thing too. I was filming some videos where I was like showing off and shooting with one hand and I kept having a lot of primer strike and I would just squeeze harder to power through it to finish the video, but it made my hand shake and it looked pretty funny. That's why we put a blooper clip of it out yeah. of mine. That was pretty <laughs> that was funny good. looking. That was good. But yeah. So if you are running into this issue with a brand new gun, you're like, okay, I've just bought myself a brand new 22 pistol. Why is it not firing? It's another reason you should always, when you buy a new gun, take it out and shoot it. Oh, yeah. Especially if you're going to use it as like a home defense thing, you don't want to find out when somebody's breaking into your house that, oh, <laughs> I've got the wrong ammo in or I didn't oil it properly. It, it's important to take these things out and practice at least a little bit to find these oh, types of issues because you never know when a manufacturing defect is going to happen. Yeah, the best thing you can do if you do get a new gun is to put probably a good half a thousand rounds through it to break it in, and that's gonna you'll be able to, from that be able to determine if you do have any factory defects because though everything is built pretty well now, there's still guns out there that do have factory defects, and it's more often than a lot of people would think. Also, so especially with uh, ARs or something like that, if something's not tightened properly. Um, it can it can be dangerous <laughs> with with the higher calipers with a 22, you know, the explosion is not going to be a whole lot. But when you shoot these big guns, I have had that happen. I had a loose gas tube uh, or an AR-15 that it was new, and the gas tube actually did loosen up, um, and that's not very safe to have that much gas exploding in your face. <laughs> it's always another reason why it's important. Always wear your uh, PPE, you know your ear protection your eye protection anything when you're firing a brand new gun as well you never know what's going to happen yeah for sure um do you have any other uh, things you want to cover on the uh the, primer strike no nah, i'm good for that one well um anyways guys we hope you enjoyed this video uh be sure you like subscribe and uh check out the merch store there'll be a link in the description below for that um and if you've had any issues with brand new guns, let us know what they are. We can discuss them, talk about what goes on, you know, when you're opening a brand new gun and whether or not, you know, something makes a mistake or, you know, or if something tears up. Yeah. We're happy to help and respond to your comments, guys. Just leave them down below if you have any questions, uh, and we'll get to them as soon as we can. Thanks, guys. Thank y'all. Have a good one.